Today we're going to do a quick video about current sharing because a lot of people were talking about in my last video that I should connect the other lead on this side. And it is true and you want to do that and practice good current sharing wire configurations. But when you're pushing 0.1 to 4 amps across the 150 amp bus bar, you're not going to have any current sharing problems. Whether you connect it right here, right here, or whether you connect this over here, the amount of current that's going to flow is pretty much the same. And I want to show it to you guys, so let's do it real quick. So first we're going to connect over here. We've got 5.92 amps. We have 5.7, so it's off by 0.2 amps. But as this decreases, this will be less and less of a problem. So once it hits 0.1 or 0, when these are actually balanced, the amount of current difference across this whole battery bank is very, very small. Pushing 0.1 amps through a 150 amp bus bar, no matter how long this is, is not going to be an issue. And you can actually test this out by putting longer bus bars and using a clamp meter to see how the current is flowing. And I've done that. I've put cells at the very end. I'd put a clamp meter and then I would put it on this side only. And I found that the current sharing was equal across the whole pack. Now let's talk about high amperage cases. If we were trying to push 100 amps into this pack, you need to put it over here. You need to swap it over here halfway through its charging cycle. You should put it over here just to check and see how much current is flowing. But for this, just balancing them, it's not an issue at all. Now let's talk about where current sharing is a huge issue. Now small battery packs with high discharge rates like lithium titanate or lithium polymer, they can push 10C. You're gonna have to absolutely wire this perfectly every single time. That means if you have multiple packs in parallel, the current sharing is critical because you want as much current from every single pack as possible. This is a very tiny pack, but these tiny terminals, I was pushing over 100 amps with this thing. So your connections need to be perfect. But for large solar battery banks at low C rates, it's not nearly as much of an issue. Also, if you have high resistance batteries, such as old flooded lead acids, also, current sharing is a huge issue and you need to wire it perfectly. Now we're going to discuss current sharing for a large solar power system. You need a DC clamp meter and you need to start probing your system to see how the current is flowing. If there's a problem, you will instantly find it with one of these meters. So first we're going to add a 1500 watt load to these inverters. So first, let's see how the current is being shared by the inverters. These are in parallel operation, but this one is powering the leg that this heater is on. So let's compare the current, and we've got 52, 53 amps, and then over here, we have 1 amp. So even though these are wired similarly and they're in parallel, this one is pulling a lot more current. Now we're going to figure out how the current is flowing through the entire battery bank. And we have 14 kilowatt hours and I want to ensure that all of the batteries are being discharged at the same rate. So that when you hit a low voltage disconnect situation, all of the batteries are at the same voltage and that's very important. So first let's check the main battery cable and we have 50 amps. That's what's required to run our loads right now. And we have a bus bar with three terminals connected, but each battery pack is a different size. So that means there's gonna be a different internal resistance. This is a small battery pack over here, the BYD at only 3.76 kilowatt hours. So it's not gonna be providing as much current as the other batteries. So let's test that out. So the BYD pack is only contributing 13 amps out of 50. Now the second conductor goes out to a very large battery bank and it's also a thicker wire so the resistance is lower. That means that this one's gonna push a lot more current. And we're pushing 20 amps through this one. Now the final one, these are all very low resistance and this is two gauge wire. So let's see how much this one's producing, 13 amps. So the larger battery bank with lower internal resistance and very large cables is powering more of the load than the other ones. 
if I were to test these wires and only one of them was producing 5 amps and another one was producing 40 amps, that means we have a current sharing problem. But because it's proportional to the size of the battery bank from each lead, that means that they are sharing current properly and once they re reach a low voltage, they should all shut down at the same time. So these are current sharing properly for their given load. But this doesn't tell us about the individual batteries and how they are current sharing, which I think is more important and what I test for more often. Now we're gonna test to see if this battery pack has any current sharing problems. So we have two Battleborns in series, two Battleborns in series, and two Lion Energies in series. But these batteries are newer and these are older and these are 90 amp hours. And we have the main connection points, main positive over here, main negative all the way over there. And to tell how much current is flowing through each parallel pack, we're gonna use a clamp meter on where they connect in series. So right here we have 7.4 amps and that's how much current is flowing through this pack. Now let's test this one over here. And we have only 6.9 amps. That means that this one is taking up more of the work than the other ones. Even though it's further connected than the other ones and these wires are over gauged, this one is taking more current than the other ones. That means these will be depleted faster than the other ones. Now let's test the line energy and that one because it's only 90 amp hours, actually only one of them is 90 amp hours, but because they're in a series configuration, that will be the total capacity for the entire pack. So let's get a clamp meter on there and see what's going on. And we're only pulling six amps. So yeah, even though these are wired properly, we have different capacities and different aged batteries, but for this large of a pack and at lower loads, these will cut off at practically the same amount. But if I were to reduce the load and all of these wires are over gauged, I mean, think about this for a second. We're pushing seven amps through two gauge wire. So this is complete overkill. But yeah, current sharing is a problem down here, but for small loads and with a solar battery and trickle charging it with solar, I wouldn't worry about it. I would just leave it as is. If you're trying to push the entire pack's capacity at a very high rate, such as charging the Tesla with split phase output, then you're gonna run into some current sharing problems. Also, if these were the same age and they were wired with the same gauge wire and this one was pulling a lot more than this one, then I absolutely would have a problem. But these batteries I had for a year longer than these ones and this one has been put through a lot. So I think actually one of the connections could be slightly loose on the terminals because I took apart this Battleborn. So yeah, you could test the resistance of each wire and figure it out also that way, but I'm pretty sure it's just the battery's age and the setup that I'm doing. All of these are in parallel though, and they're current sharing as much as I need for this application, so I think it's fine. And these wires are complete overkill, so it should be good to go. Something else to think about is if one of these crimps were not perfect, you would have more resistance across this battery pack and the current sharing would be different. But because because these are over gauged and you have a lot of copper everywhere and these crimps are really good because I use good crimpers, I'm not concerned about that problem at all. But if you're a beginner and one of your packs is drawing a lot more than another one, be sure to check your crimps or swap out wires and see if that fixes your problem. But yeah, usually when I build a battery bank, I always check where the current's flowing with this meter. If everything is sharing the current nicely, then I don't really care about it. But understand that current sharing can depend on the capacity of the battery and also the age. Another thing to think about is the resistance of a BMS. And if you have a 20 amp BMS versus a 100 amp BMS, the resistance across that could change the current sharing ability. Even if each one is only pushing 10 amps for a solar battery bank from each pack, um, it could be an issue if you have large, long wire runs and there is a bottleneck situation because that's similar to like a bad crimp connection. But if all of your crimp connections are good and the BMSs are the same rating, like every BMS in here is 100 amps except for the BYD pack. And on the data sheets for the BMS, it will tell you the resistance. So you could always look up that value and calculate it for your wire runs and how you want the current to be shared in proportion to the capacity of each pack. 
But as long as you check each parallel string of batteries and make sure that each one's sharing current appropriately, you should be good to go. When I first built the system, I checked this battery bank down here. I fixed it. I changed out a couple wires because some were under gauged and the current sharing wasn't that good. It was off by like two amps. But if it's off by like one amp, I think it's fine. I mean, there's no way you're going to be pushing one C with a solar battery bank. If we were not pushing 50 amps and we were only pushing 5 amps, the amount of current sharing would not be an issue at all and they will drop together very slowly. If you're pushing like 100 amps continuously, then all of these wires are going to be stressed and wherever there's a difference of resistance, you will see it instantly with this meter. And that's pretty much it. With solar batteries, it's a lot easier because each pack is pushing a small amount of current usually. I mean, we were only measuring like 7 amps from 100 amp hour batteries. So that's like a 0.07 C rate. So that is nothing to be concerned with. If you're pushing 10 C or 5 C with like lithium polymer and titanate, like I said in my lab a second ago, you need to wire it perfectly because the current sharing problems in those instances can be massive. And you need to over gauge everything and make sure that the resistance across the whole pack is equal so the current flows very nicely but yeah for this this is a joke just you know use a clamp meter and check everything and you'll be fine anyways i hope you guys like this video super fun topic and i really should talk about it more because it's pretty fun and clamp meters are great if you do not have a dc clamp meter i was using a whole effect sensor that was usb powered for like years and i was like i don't need this thing and it did work really well up to 100 amps but this thing's like 90 bucks it goes to 400 amps and I've told you guys previously why I like this one compared to my South Wire or whatever, Southwest Wire Company one. This one, the screen is just beautiful. Look at that. So, yeah, and it stays on. The beeping's great. So, yeah, this is a great tool to have if you don't have it. Anyways, I will talk to you guys later. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.